What's up, y'all? As you can see, I'm uh, currently booking it, doing about 13 miles per hour on an old Red Rover. Um, this is my entry for the um, February Self Camping Alliance Challenge, the Memory Challenge, set by Kathy Loves Camping. And I'm going to go to this first spot. I ain't been to in a long ass time. And then if I can't fit at that spot, there's another spot. I, I have like a B and a C. But I kind of want to, uh, tonight's supposed to be 30 mile gusts with, I mean, um, up to 50 mile gusts. So I want to maybe stay away from some trees if I can. But if not, I'll just hawk for uh, deadfall. But yeah. That's the plan for tonight, and I'll turn y'all back on in a little bit. This outdoors when I ain't been out for a stealth camp in a little bit, just been busy. You know, family life, work life, life period. But yeah. This is kind of my first thought, y'all, because of the crazy gusts. You know, if I can get out the wind and not have to worry about trees taking my ass out. Let's see. Well, I can go down here. Easy does it. Easy does it. Put some brakes on. Put some brakes on. Put some brakes on. Let me park the bike right here and I'm going to take the pack off and I'm going to go check the other side. Because I have a low profile bivy tent. I just got to find a flat enough spot for it. Right there is kind of kind of skinny. Yeah, the water's usual up to here. Let's see. I, oof. I really wouldn't like to be this close to the water, so I might have to just suck it in on on the little edge of the bridge. But let me go see. spot y'all right here then I got all this flat spot to chill with it's got a good breeze let's take a look on this side y'all a bunch of flat land let's see I'm, I'm curious if it would be good fishing under here because in Baton Rouge under the bridges it did good but I wonder if it'd be too shallow you know maybe in the summertime so when the fish come to get out the sun and it's dark all the time under the bridge maybe but I need some more water I would probably be fishing here I'm glad it's not gonna rain, folks. All this trash didn't just teleport here. That's like the high water mark. <laughs> that ain't if that ain't a little sketchy, but I'ma check one more time before I start setting up my, my uh tent. But yeah, I'm in between two bridges that if you can't see, but there's cars going by. Here's a dirt bike, it sounds like. But yeah, it's windy. 
But the good thing, y'all, about this wind is that it'll keep these mosquitoes off. And then there's a bucket that's tire that's like cut off piles that I can use to uh, sit on. So I'm glad I didn't bring my little seat. But yeah, let's go. Let me put down this pack. Let's go by the water. I'm going to get the bottom of my tent a little muddy or a little rocky. But whatever. It's a tent. It's meant to kind of get dirty. Oh, look at all the... Uh, when it was cold, you see all them snail shells? That's golden apple snails. They're invasive. And uh, the only thing that really eats them is raccoons. And they leave these little... Uh, these little pods like if you see them while you're fishing knock them off and you help out because they eat up all the aquatic plants and stuff and the eggs are toxic if you get them on you i think don't quote me on that but they're like bright pink um like clusters right just barely above the water line and yeah so knock them off or whatever they're on if you can oh, oh that's a little mushy not going there Anymore. Just exploring. You never know what you find under here. Who? I'm getting a little slippy. It feels good getting back out for a stealth camp, folks. Oh, if you don't mind, can you uh, do me a favor if you like this and you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And if you can share it with some other people if they like this kind of stuff, you know, help out the channel, help out the algorithm, help out Dersman. But yeah, I'm kind of thinking over there, but right here would be nice because it's actually like all these fawns or, or whatever they are. But I'm kind of close because there's a business over here, if you can't see. Right, shell, yeah. but I'm going to go check that little, little canal out right there. Oh man, this be a beautiful place to fish. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to come fish right here. All right, folks. So I hung out for about an hour, just to make sure and let kind of traffic die down. But this is kind of a little special video for me, y'all. I've been wanting this tent, and uh, and I want to thank y'all, the subscribers anybody who's donated to the channel especially pc my boss a couple other people that donated to the channel i want to really thank y'all so it bought me this uh the gear top um bivy i have the plume bivy too which i've seen plenty of times with me and uh with what was left over from my little youtube check i bought my uh little girl lucy a bunch of outfits so or a couple of outfits so thank y'all it means the world to me and uh, I got to get this up so, so I can get out of mosquitoes. But yeah, it's a, it's kind of a bigger one of the plume bivy that I've already had. And like I said, I've been wanting this. So thank y'all subscribers and anybody who's watched, clicked, shared, donated. This, this tank goes out to y'all. So in this video, y'all, um... Oh, just swallowed a mosquito. God, that was gross. Hopefully it didn't have someone else's blood in it. So, y'all, I live a relatively happy life. I have had some bad stuff happen in my life. But in this one, I'm going to bring up only good memories. And, uh, and one of my first shout-outs, y'all go check out if you're not subscribed. Um, go check the dude's video out. Tim, he sent me some lures in the mail that I tried the other day and failed. But, um, Tim from, um, Simple Outdoors, go check him out. He's a pretty good, just relax. He's in New York. It's a different, like, um, environment than I see. He does some pretty cool, relaxed videos. Yeah, go check out Tim from, um, Simple Outdoors. Cool fella. Ooh, driving these stakes in this clamshell sucks. Ah, I finally found a little mud not the strongest but i'm sheltered from all this wind so unlike the um the gear top plume bivy 2 this is a double hoop bivy what i like about this one i've only set it up in the backyard is as you can tell it's coffin shape i get more room it has more ventilation 
and it has a slightly higher peak actually a pretty good higher peak so at the head end it comes to about my belly button and then it goes down to about a foot that way so yeah so there it is folks set up without the um the rain fly on it like i said it's nice it's still a low profile shelter in my book because it's lowered in your belly button but just this little head space is like primo compared to the plume 52 and um the way more ventilation like in the summertime i burn up in the plume 52 but this one you leave it like this put a tarp over it it's got another um another little ventilation spot at the foot end and just more ventilation this is entirely better for for summertime but yeah let me get my stuff in there and uh, i hope that's my blood it's only supposed to get to about the 50s y'all so i didn't see no reason in bringing the 35 degree so i did bring my 50 degree sleeping bag and i have my liner in case i get a little chill and a uh, merino wool knit cap because i just like sleeping in a tent with it spring is upon us y'all so i'm inside the baby y'all unfortunately some mosquitoes got in here but uh, the second youtuber i want to give a shout out to and he to the best of my memory which ain't all that good but anyway um um camping in plain sight i could kind of remember like seeing his video i can't remember the exact one but uh he's like one of the ogs at least to me one of the first videos i've seen and i'm like man i want to get out there and do that so you know here's a thank you to camping in plain sight and um as you can see what well, i got headroom where my gear top too heavy i have to be like this um now let me tell y'all about my first like um this i'm gonna tell y'all more than one memory tonight but um i'll just give y'all a little um crash course so up until when i got married this time not the first time and another time i'll tell you in a little bit i didn't quite believe of happy tears y'all always thought it was bs but um Oh, don't mind my step two. Jack Daniels down home punch. Let me get that stealth crack. Hopefully it ain't all shook up. So here I am at my wedding with my wife. And um, it was one of the more happier days of my life. I made a fool of myself, which is normal. Um, I drank a little bit too much, which is also normal. So, here I am up at the front of uh, where we're getting married at, and then here comes my wife down the aisle, and I kid y'all not, I had happy tears, y'all, you know? And, like, up until then, I didn't believe it. And then fast forward, like, a year later, or some more time than that, and, um, well, back, my wife was, it was just a beautiful situation, with our wedding and my wife was beautiful and it was just an awesome moment you know all this like to to be that happy after like my last marriage went so south or went south abruptly it was just one of them things that hit you in the feels and I, I kind of cracked some tears you know that like uh, it was a beautiful moment fast forward a little time ago after that and uh my boss at work was like, man, Nick, you know, having a kid will, will change you. So Lucy had been in the belly for a little bit. And I went to the first, like, um, ultrasound or whatever. And, man, it just hit me like that little thing right there is something we made. You know what I mean? And it was another one of them. So, Michelle, you were involved in the two beautiful times of my life that I uh, happy cried. And now I don't believe it's bullshit it's just like stuff welled up in you and uh it caught me but you know seeing little baby lucy floating around and in, in michelle's belly i uh i cracked a tear and i do believe it's changed me but changed me for the better but that's some of the beautiful memories in my life and i'll come back to y'all in a little bit with some more memories because i i got a lot of stuff
Oh, this is pretty good. Country cocktails, down home punch. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I was a little bit worried, but if I do decide to sleep without the um the rain fly on it, I might lift up my sleeping mat and put it under it, you know. Because I'm afraid of um on these clamshells popping my Nemo tensor mat that I'm sleeping on. This would be a sad, sad panda after talking about all these beautiful memories. And then this is another one of my tents. I gotta buy me like a roll of Tyvek or find some old Tyvek and cut it to where it's super light and just, just to protect your investments and stuff. And and like I said earlier, thank you all, you, 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 and little Johnny down the way for watching this middle-aged man drink a beer and hang out in weird places and show tents and have family adventures. I thank y'all for helping me get this tent and get Lucy some clothes. Not that I'm hard up for money, y'all, but I just, you know, while I was getting this, I'm like, let me spend the rest and get a uh, little girl some clothes. So she's very thankful for y'all. And so am I, it from the bottom of my heart. Time to cook, y'all, which I ain't done in a little bit. But I got an interesting meal that I don't think I've had this before, so. Come on, man. Pot lighter, pot holder, BRS stove, and canister. Let me get this set up, yeah. So I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I frequent, every time I get a chance, Sportsman's Warehouse. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is a little raspy. But every time I find a cool new, um, like, uh, food thing to, to eat for camping. But this, look, uh, pasta a la vodka with chicken. Looks pretty good. It's got, like, pasta chicken chunks, parmesan, premium signature edition. Let's see how much I need. Um, I need one and a half cups of boiling water. So let me get at that. So it smells and looks pretty good, y'all. But I don't see the big hunks of chicken like on the package. But whatever. It's getting a little late. I gotta cook this. But hey, maybe it's a new favorite meal. Pasta a vodka with chicken. Also, y'all, I want to thank my dad and my stepmom. One of my Christmas gifts. So it's this, uh, like sport that turns into one second. Turns into a pretty cool knife. And then on the back end, it has a fire starter that goes with this knife. So that's what I'm going to eat and start my meal with. All reliable. Toke 750. Once again, thank you, Pops and Miss Louise. A couple years back, you gave me this. And uh, it's my go to non. None like uh, making a fancier meal. It's good for boiling water, and it's lightweight, and it's like stacking. So it's it's a pretty good little setup. I gotta say, y'all, even though I urban stealth camp a lot, I'll still take like an urban patch of woods over being under under a bridge where the traffic is kind of aggravating, and like this bridge makes funny noises. And there is a slight chance that an alligator curls up with me. But yeah. Another good memory. I know a lot of with Michelle. I just, I, I came. So we went to um, Global Wildlife. And um, it's this place where you go on like a hayride. And you get to feed animals by hand. And she loves animals and stuff, so it's a no-brainer. So there's like, um, for a quarter, you get like this catfish food. And I got down on my knee while she was, I think it was while she was getting the, um, the, um, catfish food. And she thought I was just kneeling down, you know, to get the catfish food. But then I, I popped a question and she said yes. And it was a, it was a wonderful time. <clears throat> My voice is, I don't know why at night it gets like this. Don't I sound sweet? What's up, y'all? My name's 
Hey, hey, hey. But yeah, thank you, Kathy Loves Camping, for um, making this challenge. How long ago were these shells put here? They ain't dredged a lake in a long time. This bivy would be badass just for putting under a tarp on a good day. Like for a little bit more minimalistic stargazing stealth camping. But I would have to dye this bright ass white. You know, the green blends in with my environment. This bright ass white would stick out like a dick on a fish. This stuff. I hope I didn't. I hope I didn't just make it in the soup, but that's how much it said to use. So on this last trip that I did um, with my dad, we had a real, real, real nice campfire going. And I don't know what it is about a campfire and some step twos, but they went back pretty good. I think I drank more than I expected. Anybody else have that problem around a good campfire with good company? That that you surveys as step twos or whatever, or even step threes, they go down pretty good, just hanging around the campfire. It was oof. The minute I put my head on my uh, my pillow, I knocked out. I, I had downloaded a movie to watch, and uh, there was no watching of a movie, no nothing. I was I was knocked out, y'all. Yep, I've done it again, y'all. I've made soup. God damn it, and I even used less than what they told me to. They said uh, one, what is it on the back? One and a quarter cup. Oh crap. I think I used one and a half. Okay, never mind. I take it back really was, that was my fault. God damn it. So I'm gonna give you a quick little down and dirty review of the um, Ready Wise Pro Pasta Alva Vodka with Chicken. Let's get that first scoop. The soup. Oh, got a good spice, y'all. Man, that <clears throat> that's good, y'all. So, um, oh, dropped a piece on the tent. Can't let that go. So, on a scale of one to five, um. Tense. I'd probably give it a four. It has a good bit of pasta. It has an awesome flavor. It's got a little like zing to it, which I like. My wife generally cooks stuff that has a little zing to it. Everything she cooks has a little bit of uh, cayenne in it. But anyway, this would be a five uh, star if it had more chicken in it like on the um on the cover of it shows like big hunks of chicken and so far it's just like minced pieces of chicken but it is one of the more flavorful ones ones i've ever had i definitely would buy a one or two of this again and this is with it being like soup y'all it would probably be the bee's knees if it had the right amount of water in it. Ooh, woo. Oh yeah, get get y'all some of this. This is uh I'm going to Pound Town. Borrowing outdoor McGee's saying. But this some good stuff. Well, good night, y'all. It's, um, let me not. It's a little bit after 9 30. It is a work night. I'm tucked in 
like a bug in a rug. It's not really cold, it's just windy. So the 50 degree sleeping bag's doing good and uh, I'll catch y'all in the morning and uh, thanks for watching so far. Time to catch some Z's. And I decided not to put the rain fly on. Well, good morning y'all. Um... <laughs> it was an all right night sleep. I wouldn't call it the best. Like, as you can see, I'm on kind of like a gangster lean. And uh, that's just where I could pitch it. The other place I could have pitched it was full on mud, and I didn't want to do that. But uh, I got a couple hours of sleep. Not the best sleep. And uh, it didn't get cold last night. Like I said, just windy. And, um... Oh, look at all the mosquito bites on me. And I'm about to start picking up y'all. And uh got to use the bathroom. And uh, I had a little breakfast with me. But I'm decided I'm going to just get some breakfast at the house. But yeah, um, I'll catch y'all in a little bit. Let me start picking up this stuff. The worst part of a stealth camp. All packed, <coughs> all packed up y'all. Record time. Ready to hop on my mighty steed. Um, this is the outdoorsman. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Stealth Camping Alliance. What? What?